Tensions are running high in the St. Louis area after a police officer shot and killed an unarmed black teenager Saturday. Morgan Radford has the details. Angry residents rallied outside the police department Sunday morning in Ferguson, Missouri, a St. Louis suburb. They chanted, I'm black and I'm proud, and held signs reading, no justice, no peace. They're protesting the death of 18-year-old Michael Brown, who was shot and killed Saturday by a police officer right there near his grandmother's house. Police say Brown was inside a police car, although it's still unclear exactly why, and somehow became involved in a struggle with an officer. It was an, a physical altercation within the police car between the subject and the police officer at the time that extended eventually out into the street. And that is, in fact, where the shooting occurred. Uh, uh, the fatal shooting occurred um, was in the street outside of the police car. Asked how many times Brown was shot, St. Louis County Police Chief John Belmar said. It was more than just a couple, but I don't think it was uh, uh, many more than that. Brown was a recent high school graduate due to start college Monday. As word of his death spread through the community Saturday night, the reaction was first shock, then anger. He don't bother nobody. My son just turned 18 to graduate from high school. We don't bother nobody. County officials have taken over the investigation from Ferguson's police department. Belmar said the officer has been placed on paid administrative leave while the investigation goes forward. The NAACP is calling for the FBI to be part of that investigation. Speaking to the media Sunday, Belmar left open that possibility. Morgan Radford, Al Jazeera, New York. Joining me now is Ariva Martin. She is an attorney in Los Angeles. Um, so, Ariva, we have to talk about something like this again. So, um, let's talk about it. There is a lot we don't know. A couple things, though, that we do know are key. The police have said Mike Brown was unarmed. Yes. The police also said he was running away. Put those two things in context. We know those things. You know, what's troubling about this story to me, Rochelle, during the press conference by the chief of police for the St. Louis County, he said that somehow Mike Brown ended up in the police car with the police officer. There was a struggle inside the car where Mike grabbed for the gun of the officer, somehow ends up outside the car, and then the fatal shot occurs, and we've been told that that might be as many as eight shots mm -hmm. that were actually fired by the police officer. But we're hearing some conflicting stories from witnesses who say that when Michael was shot, he actually had his hands up. So I'm a little puzzled about how an unarmed teenager you know, pushes his way into a police car and struggles to take the gun of an armed, trained police officer. Something's not adding up with the, the version of stories that we're hearing so far. And at this point, is, is it, at this point, police surely know why Mike Brown was in the car. Why are they not saying so right now? Absolutely. There, there's more to this story that obviously the police know because they've had an opportunity to interview the police officer that was involved in the shooting. Uh, I think the police are concerned about, you know, tainting the investigation. We know that the St. Louis County Police Chief said that the investigation results would be turned over to the county prosecutor. We know that the NAACP has uh, called on the FBI to get involved and that Attorney General Eric Holder has in fact said that he will monitor or his office, the Civil Rights Division, and will uh, monitor what happens with regards to this case. So, uh, you know, thinking positively about what the police chief is saying, I think he's saying he doesn't want to leak too much information that may in some way undermine the investigation. But still, the, the comment about the young man pushing his way into the car and struggling to get a gun when he knows he's unarmed has left this community e extremely frustrated and even angry. And let's talk about that. And, and you've kind of gone, gone, gone this way a little bit. How does the community community get a thorough open investigation how how does that happen and, and it, maybe it is what you said the 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 justice department saying you know we're going to keep an eye on this but the community obviously needs a thorough open investigation when an unarmed teenager is dead absolutely and already the ferguson police department because we should make note that this was actually an officer of the Ferguson Police Department, which is a small municipality outside of St. Louis, 
called on the St. Louis County, which is a larger police department, mm -hmm. to take over the investigation. So already they're saying we want to remove ourselves from the investigation to give the investigation more objectivity by having the county police get involved in the investigation. But I think having the Justice Department with its eyes on this case is also very important, particularly in light of what just happened in New York with the chokehold case and the determination by the medical examiner there that that was, in fact, a homicide. You know, tensions are, are really at an all-time high in African-American communities, and the distrust for police officers when these kinds of cases happens just can't be underestimated. Ariva Martin, I'm sure we will continue to talk about this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rochelle.